So yeah, just wanted to just say on behalf of the IMOOC team, Justin, um, thank you for giving up your time and, and doing this presentation today. Um, certainly, I know, yeah, Poodle has got a, a bigger and bigger following, so um, it's interesting you saying about those download stats. Um, but yeah, very much looking forward to seeing this presentation. So um, over to you. All right, thanks very much, Shane. All right, well, yeah, thanks everybody for coming along. It's Friday night here, so uh, I guess you're not at the disco, you're, you're at home or you're, you're in your office. Um, so I haven't turned on my camera. I can turn on my camera. Um, yeah, I suppose I could do that. Let me just turn that on then. On the spare room upstairs, so you'll really see it. Um, here we go. That's me. Just had a shower, so I'm, I'm as clean as like, clean as can be. Um, Serge has actually seen my face before. He's in the, uh, the the Japanese Association of Language Teachers group here in Nagasaki, so he's a he's a local. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about Poodle and and poodling. I think I'll start from the beginning because it seems like most of you haven't installed Poodle, so that's that's great actually. It makes it uh, quite easy for me to talk about it. Right, Dot, I've got that. So yep, I'll when I when I simulate desktop share, I will turn off the uh, the camera. I'll be quite happy to turn off the camera. Um, okay, so here we go. So what does Poodle do? Well, uh, Poodle uh, it's it's mainly known for its audio and video recording. It does other things uh, just because. It kind of, it's grown organically. I, I initially started out just wanting to have an audio recorder in Moodle for myself, and I made an audio recording thing. And then as I added, you know, new things for myself, my own uh, classes, uh, it became Poodle, and other people started using it. And uh, so, it really, really never was intended to be what it has become, um, but it's become quite popular, which is good, um, and it's quite quite a lot of time for me uh, to, to maintain it all. So, but yeah, it's mainly known for the uh, audio recording features and the video recording. Um, also, we have drawing pictures, so it's possible to draw a picture on a whiteboard and submit that uh, as, a submit, as a submission to an assignment or to a question, um, or just simply to add that uh, in the body of a page or some uh, somewhere where you have an HTML editor. There's a number of interactive widgets, uh, which I use quite extensively but because it's not documented so well, I think uh, that's one reason why people mainly think of Poodle as audio and video recording, because they haven't really documented these widgets so well. But I will introduce some of those today, and I'll show you how, the, how they can be used. Now, uh, just, just before I get started here, I want to say that since Moodle 2.4 came out, the caching has been become quite aggressive in Moodle, and that has affected a few things. And so we use JavaScript quite a lot in in Poodle, but sometimes the HTML is cached differently to the JavaScript. So you'll have old JavaScript or old HTML on a page, and that will affect uh, the display of some of the Poodle uh, items. So this is more for the future reference. If anybody downloads this uh, uh, the slide, the set of slides, and, and wants to use Poodle later. Um, so perhaps since you're not installing it right now, you don't need to worry so much. But the, uh, this setting here under Site Administration, Plugins, Filters, and Common Filter Settings, this is a text cache lifetime. So rather than filtering text, you know, every one minute or every two minutes, we here set it to not cache text at all. So every time it loads a page, it will it will uh, filter the text, and uh, that makes things work well. Right? So should you encounter problems with Poodle? That's the first thing to, tr to do right now. Since Moodle 2.4, I hope to find a way out of that soon. It's no big deal. It doesn't actually affect the performance of your site at all. Okay, um, let's get on with it. Now, what Poodle plugins are there? Well, there's a lot of plugins, um, but I think the thing to note is, is I tell people it's a bit like a Mexican restaurant because you go to a Mexican restaurant and you know you, whatever you order, you basically get the same thing. You get guacamole and sour cream and cheese and refried beans, you just get it in a different package. You get it in a quesadilla or you get it in a taco. And it's the same thing with Poodle. You get you just get uh, audio and video recording or those drawing on whiteboards, but you get it in a different location. So uh, you can get it in the repository. So when you use the file picker, you can choose to have uh, to record an audio file or to record a video file or to draw on a whiteboard. Or you can set an assignment for students so they can submit an audio recording or a video recording or a whiteboard, uh, draw on a whiteboard. Uh, also, we've got the assignment feedback that's new, and that means that when if a student records in audio, you can actually respond to their submission in audio, which is you know quite useful and quite 
quick in some ways. Uh, in assignment two, in the 2.2 .2 assignment, so that's the old one, uh, you can do those things too. Uh, and there's the question type. So uh, in response to a question, students can record audio or video or draw on a whiteboard. And then there's the database activity field. So when uh, if you if you use a database activity, which is a really flexible and really good mod, I, I enjoy it a lot. But it doesn't get a lot of use, uh, I think, because I don't hear much talk about it. But if you use a database activity module, then you can uh, accept kind of submissions from students, which are audio or video or whiteboard. Okay. Uh, and in the centre of all this is the Poodle filter. Because all of the uh, the functionality, the main functionality, I, I placed in the one module, which is a Poodle filter, and that makes it much easier for me to maintain. Uh, so it's placed all there. In fact, the Poodle filter by itself, uh, most people probably wouldn't have a use for it. But when combined with these things here, uh, it powers all of them really. So all the audio, all the audio and video recording, and all of the uh, whiteboards and the other various things, they're all inside the filter. So you do need that. That's a dependency. Um, but you can just install it like any other mod. Feel free to stop me with questions, uh, anybody. I enjoy questions. Um, does the plugin include all the components in, one, in the one download, or is it a set of plugins? All right, that's actually a good question. Uh, in the uh, the Moodle world, especially the the Moodle.org plugins database from which you download plugins, you can only download them as one item. Right. So if you're downloading it from Moodle.org, it's going to be uh, item by item. But it does say there that there is a dependency for the Poodle filter. And if you're using Moodle 2.5, it won't let you install something that doesn't have the dependency already installed. So uh, in Moodle 2.5, you will you'll need to have the Poodle filter installed before you can run uh, before you can install the other one. However, on the Poodle.com site, I'll just put a little note. Uh, you can actually download something called the Poodle. Here it comes. Quite proud of the name, the Poodle Caboodle, and that does contain all the mods in one big zip file. So you just take that uh, zip file and unload it in the root of your Moodle directory, and that would do all of the mods uh, in one one hit. That's quite useful, although uh, in some ways, uh, perhaps it's better if people are aware of what they're doing and what they're installing. So if you're really looking for a shortcut, that's one good way of shortcutting the install process, but Doing it plugin by plugin is not bad either, um, and of course, if you use Git, uh, we do have Git repositories too, and they make it very easy to maintain uh, the plugins that you've installed because you can just up, up, update them very simply. Well, let's move on now. I do want to go through and actually demonstrate some of these these things. So I don't want to do too much talk and chalk. So. Uh, I will perhaps be a little bit skimpy on some of the details because I think you know the details can sometimes confuse you when that's not really what you need to know uh, initially. So uh, the first thing is uh, let's just talk about video recording. So this is the Poodle video recorder, and you can see uh, you know it's a, it's a video recorder. Um, here we have the connection status because you do need to connect to our recording server. If you have your own recording server, you can use that, and uh, if you contact me, I can help you get it installed. Um, but for the most part, you can use our one, which is located in Tokyo, and it doesn't cost any money. Uh, and if the light here is green, then you know you're connected and good to go, and there's a time here. Uh, you've got the big buttons here. We like big buttons. And you can actually also convert your recordings to MP4. MP4 is good because it plays back on iPads and iPhones and Android devices. It's the most... Uh, with most universal uh, playback format for video. Uh, when we record into the cloud, uh, we this is our, our server here in Tokyo. So this uh, raises a bit of a bit of confusion because people are not quite sure how how it handles their data. So I'll just explain that briefly. When the student records, the recording goes straight into our, our server in Tokyo, where it's processed and and handled and converted in some cases to MP4. And then it's copied almost immediately uh, into Moodle, and so then it, then, it, then that video file resides in the Poodle, uh, sorry, in the Moodle data directory, just just like any other file, just as though you uploaded uh, a picture or uh, a video file from your computer. It's stored in the Moodle data directory, so 
data, data backups and restores, it all handles it uh, just, just within the, the Moodle framework. Um, and after you have copied that file or after the file has been copied into the Moodle server, then it's deleted from tokyo.poodle.com within about 15 minutes. Firewalls, you'll go through a firewall dot. It's a really good question. That's quite a trick actually, getting it through the firewall. Uh, but it will go through the firewall because uh, it accepts connections on, I'll type it in here for the, the techie people, it accepts connections on port 1935 and on port 443. Okay, so 1935 is pretty much always blocked by, by a firewall from a school. But port 443 is not because it's the SSL port which you need to connect via HTTPS to, you know, most websites have an HTTPS uh, connection. Uh, yes, Serge, if many people try to record, it seems to be okay. Uh, at this stage, we're fine. I think, you know, if it was 1,000 or 2,000, we might have problems. Um, but at that stage, you'd need to have your own uh, recording server. But at this stage, it's just dribs and drabs. It's usually one or two classes simultaneously. And funnily enough, uh, with flash recording, a lot of the processing takes place on the client, on the, uh, within the student's browser. Um, so the, the Red5 server, which we use, uh, doesn't actually need a whole lot of grunt. So uh, we've, been, we've been pretty uh, pretty lucky so far. We haven't really had any, any problems with server overload. Okay. But we do have a problem with lag. So if you're a long way from Tokyo, uh, it can be a bit laggy. All right. So that is, that is a bit of an issue. I'd like to set up servers in Europe and one in um, America maybe, but I haven't done that yet. There is the option to install your own Poodle uh, recording server. Uh, if you need to do that, just contact me directly and I'll, I'll help you do that. Okay, uh, when, you, when you do use audio and video recording, you'll find that the settings sometimes are, uh, they don't work for you, they're, they're, the quality is bad or the uh, the connection is too slow, so you sometimes have to tweak the settings and uh, probably, I think for your own site, you'll want to play around with them a little bit, uh, but once you set the settings on the Poodle filter settings page, they become the defaults and they get applied across the board to, uh, to students. From the recorder itself, you can change those settings, but when the recorder loads, uh, these settings here, which are on the Poodle filter settings page, they are uh, moved across uh, and, and applied to the recorder to the recorder that the student loads up. Uh, lag and upload download or lag within the video. I mean lag and upload download, Andrew. So um, uh, within the video, the audio and the video should sync quite well. But uh, in upload download, sometimes it can be a bit slow. Um, there are some real time features that we have in Poodle, uh, Poodle pair work, where students can talk to each other in real time and if you're connecting to the tokyo.poodle.com server, uh, that can be a little bit slow, maybe one or two seconds between um, the audio being spoken and the audio arriving. So we have to have like walkie-talkie style conversations over and out and over, things like that. I'd like to try uh, recording later if we have a chance. So uh, stay with me. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, pair work later if we have a chance. I'd like to get everybody to log in or some of you to log in and try pair work. So hopefully we have time to do that. This is the audio recording workflow. Now I wonder if I should expand this. How can I zoom in here? Let's just try and zoom in a little bit. Oops. That doesn't work. Okay. Um, that's fine. Okay, so uh, uh, I don't want to get too technical. But when you record audio with Poodle uh, or video, uh, you can use a mobile device such as an iPad or an iPod or an Android device or you can use a desktop based flash recorder. And so Poodle should detect automatically which of those you're using and divert the, the program flow accordingly. If you're using uh, an iPhone or an iPad, uh, you'll be shown a button instead of a recorder. And when you click the button, you'll actually have to record a video. But when you record the video, the, uh, the server will actually convert that video that you've uploaded into an MP3 file, into audio. So even though the student actually has to record the video, the video part is, is thrown away. And we just keep the audio and convert it to MP3. So it actually works fairly well, but it is a little bit confusing to explain to students that they have to record the video. 
but that's a limitation of the iOS. Hopefully one day they'll allow us to do audio directly. In Android, we can do audio directly, so that, uh, that, that works pretty well. Is there any recording length limit or file size? No, there's no length limit or file size. That's up to your server, really. Um, is it similar to the Media Capture plugin, Flash Nanogong Regular? Well, it's similar in that you know it does audio recording, but um, it works better. I mean, I, I mean, of course, I have to say that, but I, I do believe that. Um, the uh, the nan Nanogong requires Java, and it doesn't record to MP3. Uh, Red5, we do re we do use Red5 on the back end, but it's only necessary for video recording, uh, really. For, for audio recording, we don't need to use Red5 anymore. And we have our own Red5 server. You're not required to install it, and hopefully you shouldn't have to worry about firewalls. So we've tried to take all of the, you know, the, the complexity out of the use of Red5. Um, and we do have Flash for desktops, but we have HTML5 for, for mobiles. Are we considering HTML5 WebRTC for that? Well, I think, no, David, it's a good question. It's, it's kind of in the future. I think if you're talking about the HTML5 audio recording APIs, that's really coming, and hopefully it arrives soon, and it'll remove the need for a lot of this stuff that we're talking about here. Um, but it just isn't quite here yet. And some of the newer browsers, like the, the beta uh, Firefox and Chrome ones, I think they actually have those. Okay, yeah, I'll check that out. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that HTML5 is going to arrive, you know, in a big rush. And when it does, we'll see a whole new swag of audio recording and video recording technologies, and that'll be great. You know, that'll that'll just lower the bar for all of the uh, uh, the Moodle people who need to um, uh, record audio. Right now, it really does uh, cause headaches for people. Um, without wanting to get too technical, I'll just explain the difference between the two audio recorders that we have in uh, the two flash recorders that we have in Poodle. We've got the MP3 recorder, which is the newer recorder, and that records straight to MP3 without any uh, need for a Red5 server. So you just you just need to worry about uh, your Moodle, and that's all. Okay, there's no there's no connection anywhere else. So it records directly to MP3. It's quite reliable, probably more reliable than the Red5 server because there's no uh, firewall traversal, and it's generally suited to recordings of shorter length, about two minutes. The, the other one, the cloud recorder, uh, as, I, as I said, that, that's pretty good. Uh, that will auto convert to MP3 if you check the little checkbox here. Um, handles long recordings quite well, so if you're going to record for 25 minutes, it's probably a better option. Um, but there is that, that network thing that's going all the way to Tokyo and back. So uh, generally I advise people to use the MP3 recorder first, and failing that, then they can try the, uh, the cloud recorder. Uh, HTML5 recording, um, a bit hard to demonstrate, but you basically you'll be showing this this button here, which is a record or choose file. Okay, yeah. Uh, dot 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 says she's on an intranet, which means they can't really access some of these these uh, these services on the internet. And actually, as it happens, my school is the same dot. So. Being the Poodle guy, I actually have my own Poodle recording server right there in my school, in the same room as the students, so that works pretty good. But yeah, that won't, that wouldn't work for you unless you, you know, you had the ability to maintain such a server. So yeah, the MP3 recording will work well for somebody in your situation. Uh, but just with this HTML5 thing, you'll be shown a button first uh, on an iOS or an iPhone, iPad or an iPhone. And then this dialog will appear here, take video or choose existing. You'll choose take video, uh, and then after you've taken the video, uh, the video will be submitted, and you'll get this little dialog here saying that the file has been uploaded successfully, and then you just save it as usual, and your file uh, will be converted to MP3 and, stay, and saved. This is the whiteboard. Uh, so in Poodle, you can draw on a whiteboard, and that drawing will be submitted to uh, Moodle as a, as a picture. So then, as far as Moodle is concerned, you've just uploaded a picture, and then everything happens uh, pretty simply from there. <laughs> very simple, very basic. I didn't spend a lot of time making it, but I spent a lot of time using it. So it really needs a bit of a revisit. It doesn't even have uh, an eraser button. Uh, but in some ways, the simplicity is good because there just isn't much for students to do, so they don't really get confused. Um, you can even set a background in there, and the background you can draw over the background. 
My daughter's just showed up. She doesn't realise we're doing a webinar. Dear daughter, why don't you, you have to go somewhere else, okay? Um, and, uh, yeah, okay. So I want to show you the whiteboard uh, shortly too. All right, I keep talking about these things I'm going to show you, so I better start showing you. I think we'll stop after the slide and I'll go through and show you some of this stuff. All right, so these are some of the interactive widgets that I mentioned earlier. So we have the, the video recorders and the audio recorders and the whiteboards. We also have these widgets. These are flashcards and uh, I use these a lot. They're very simple. They're just, um, <laughs> so, sorry guys, yeah, I just saw your message. Yeah, uh, it's Araha. She, uh, yeah, she, she loves the iPad, so she just came to get the iPad. Um, this is the flashcards. They're really neat. Uh, they're, they're very simple, but students enjoy them. They feel very gamey. I've been very interested in this whole gamification thing that we've seen uh, recently coming in a lot here on the iMoot because uh, some of this stuff that we're talking about here, uh, I've been using, I never called it gamification, but I always uh, had the impression that the students felt that if it was more game-like, uh, it was more fun to do. And so these widgets actually uh, do help with that. So I'll show you those in just a second. This is a countdown timer or a stopwatch, stopwatch. This is a calculator. We use this for actually for speed reading, but for other, other uses, you could use a stopwatch. This is a, this is the countdown timer. This is a stopwatch. This is a once player. So some people require that students can only play an audio file once. And uh, that's quite useful. So in that situation, uh, we can do this. Well, Megan, I use the flashcards uh, more as prompt cards than you know for memorization. So I, I use it in pair work. We have students, two of them will use the one computer, and there'll be a prompt on the card, and they have to respond to the prompt. So it might be a simple question like, you know, what did you do yesterday? Or it might be a, a sentence like, um, uh, I like my dog, but I don't like your mother. And the students have to change uh, that into the third person or to change the tense into past tense. Yeah, I use it as, as a kind of a stimulus or a, a prompt. I use it a lot. My students are very familiar with the activity. And the funny thing is they never seem to tire of it. They, they, they enjoy it. And once an activity is made, I can go back and use that activity as review. And uh, just, it's perennial, really. So it's quite good. This is something I was trying out for speed reading. It's a, it's a scroller. It scrolls up and it just scrolls uh, the text up slowly. So students have to read within a certain time frame. I will probably be doing something a little bit more extensive with, along the speed reading lines than that uh, in the next couple of months. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Um, but this is something we we're playing with. It's still there, but perhaps it's not so useful. Kind of. um, well, I'm going to go and screen share now and show you some stuff. Um, so let me just do that. Close off my camera. I'll close off my camera here like that. Okay. Close that. Now I start screen sharing. You should be onto the screen now. Is screen sharing working for you guys? There it is. Okay, good. Right, so this is one of the demo sites. We have a number of demo sites. Uh, I'll show you this one first. This is, a, this is for Moodle 2.4. We have a 2.4 and a 2.3 and a 2.2 and a 1.9 and a 2.5 demo site. They refresh every night at midnight. So they're kind of like Cinderella. They're really, uh, really good. I didn't make them myself. They're made by another guy here in Nagasaki, Tom, Tom Lawson. And he's very good at uh, Linux, Linux administration. So he set all this up. It's wonderful. We're really lucky to have him here. Um, and I'm just going to show you uh, one of the sets of flashcards that we have here. Okay. Move my screen here. Here we go. Okay. So this is the 100 questions activity. So here we have a Poodle countdown timer, and this counts down from one minute to zero, like this. You can see it's counting down. I don't know how good your screen sharing is working, but that's counting down now from one minute all the way to zero. And in this case, the students would answer the questions, would ask this question to their partner, 
and their partner would answer, and they would count how many questions they could ask and answer within one minute. So how did you come to school today? Which do you like better, restaurant food or home cooked food? Uh, which do you like better, rice or bread? Uh, which food do you like the best? How do you spell dictionary? If they need a prompt, they can click on the card and it will give them, uh, in some cases, the answer, in some cases, the pattern which they should use to answer the question. So these are flashcards, and this is the main way that I use them. Uh, and this is just an illustration of one of the uh, widgets. Now, what do these look like on the page? Well, that's a very good question. I'm glad you asked. Let me just show you that. So we'll go to Edit Settings. What do they look like in edit mode is what I want to ask exactly. So here we have our HTML area. So these are Poodle filter strings. Yeah, we can see a Poodle filter string. So here I set all the uh, details uh, within the body of the of the question or the uh, the activity. In this case, it's a page. Uh, the flashcards here. The Q name equals FC Basic Q and A. That is actually the name of a matching question. So just like the the Moodle flashcards module, the uh, we use the matching question to load the uh, the front and the back sides of the flashcards. Uh, and so that also means that if you need to back up and restore your course, the backup and restore will occur, will occur nicely. It was a little bit easier to do this stuff in Moodle 1.9, but in Moodle 2, it's become necessary really to hijack the matching question and use that as a data source for this, uh, these flashcards. Uh, I'll quickly show you the Poodle repository because you can see how we add these widgets. I'll just pop that open here. Here we have find or upload a sound video or output. That's good. Uh, do I have? Oh, I don't have a widget repository. Oh dear, that's no good. Um, I haven't got the. Okay. So I haven't got the widget repository ready for you to see there, but perhaps I can show you how to make that later. This is the Poodle snapshot. This allows you to take a photograph from your webcam. And just load that into your Moodle. So let's load that up now. Um, we have to allow our camera access first. Oh, there's me, and so we're screen recording. So I'll just take a snap of myself. Okay, so that's a little snap. I go next. Yeah. Okay, now my picture is loaded up into the, uh, uh, the HTML area. When I click Save and Display. We have our countdown timer, we have our flashcards, and then we have Justin's picture. So that way you can easily take snapshots of yourself or of the room or of the students. Um, it's just something that you can do. It's quite useful actually for profile photos, but even just uh, just when you're having fun a little bit, uh, it can be it's surprising the ways you can use some of these things. I'll just go back and see if there's any questions here. Um, sorry, I, I was screen sharing, so I couldn't see your questions. Um, Okay, you're all there. So getting about one hits. Excellent to use quick firework. Yes. What version of Moodle and Poodle is 100 questions running on? That there is Moodle 2.4. The uh, just this morning, I'm really, I'm really sorry. I discovered that the flashcards are actually the the questions are broken in 2.5, and I hadn't noticed it until I got ready for this preparation. So, if you're using Moodle 2.5, just just wait a, a day even. I'll, I'll probably have those flashcards fixed. Um, that's why I was using the 2.4 demo there. Um, you look how I feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we feel pretty good, eh? Okay, so uh, let's go back and show you some other stuff. Um, this is the uh, the main the main login that I'd like you to log into at any old time. Feel free to log in here. This is the demo course. It's uh, demo.poodle.com, and the uh, logins are here. I've prepared a whole bunch of logins for you, great ones. So you can be this is your chance to be Brad Pitt or Will Smith or Emma Watson. Um, you can even be Moodle Man. I've got Moodle Man there if you want to be Moodle Man. You can log in as any of these characters, uh, and your password is simply password. I'm already logged in. I don't need to do that. Um, go down here. Do some logging in. Okay, so let me uh, show you this. I'd like you to do these yourself if you have time or if you're interested. 
these are the 2013 demo activities. So uh, one of these is I'm going to show you how you can make an audio quiz using audio recording. This one I'll show you how you can get your students to draw a picture and submit that as a database, uh, as a submission, an entry in a database activity. And then finally, we'll have a go at Poodle Pair with. I don't know how that will go if everybody logs in from uh, the different countries using the, uh, the server in Tokyo, but if you're game for it, we can try that. So let's have a look at the audio quiz. It's a quiz to begin with. So I've set this up as a once player, so the audio will play only once. I'm not sure if you'll hear my audio, but let's I'll play it for you anyway. The question I asked was, please say all of the McDonald burgers that you can remember. So here you would click the record button. This is the MP3 recorder. Uh, so there's no Red 5 connection here. You click the record button and you'd say there's a Big Mac and there's a cheeseburger and a hamburger and a McFeast and a quarter pounder with cheese and a fillet of fish and a McChicken and that's all. And you hit the stop button. It converts it uh, to a WAV file first and then to an MP3 and then it uploads it. And now the, the, the upload is done. It's been submitted. Now you click next and you should be finished the quiz. Finish. That's how that's how it works, and if we can, we can play it back here, here we go. Just come check back now. Are there any questions? Here we go. Uh, oh, you're in a Zoom. What's in there? Go 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 dot. Um, impressive burger knowledge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you know, I crave burgers, but um, yeah. Uh, we have different burgers here in Japan. We have chicken tatsuta burgers, chicken tatsuta and teriyaki burgers. Um, right now, let me just quickly show you how I make those activities because that's probably more interesting than seeing them actually performed. So to do this, I'm going to go to the question bank. Let me just open up the question bank. Okay, and we're going to create a new question, create a new question, and it's going to be a Poodle recording. Here we are, Poodle recording. Now you'll see here, this is, this is why having the whole, the whole Poodle swag is better than just having, you know, the odd, you know, like just having the Poodle recording question or just having the repository. It's really good to have the whole bag, the whole bag because uh, let me see, uh, let's call this burgers, what should we call this one, should we call this um, Harry Potter, Harry Potter, uh, and choose to, again using the repository, I go to the Poodle MP3 recorder, already selected, and I record my question, and in this case I'm going to do Harry Potter. Please name all of the Harry Potter characters that you can remember. Next. Now, uh, when you record audio, you, you're offered the choice here of which player you'd like to play that audio back in. So we have the standard audio player, which is standard. We have the mini audio player, which is good if you just, you don't really require students to adjust the volume or go back and forth uh, because it's very short. Perhaps it's just a single word or a, 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 or a sentence. We have the word audio player, which will show just a word. So if you just want to you know, do a pronunciation thing, you know, they'll, they'll see the word government and click on it and then they'll hear the word government. Uh, this is similar except it plays via HTML5. This is the once player that we just saw. Uh, it will only play the audio once. If you refresh the page, it will play it again. Okay, so it's not, it's not that great. Uh, we've just seen that, so let's just, 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 just use a standard audio player here. Okay. Alright, and then that's pretty good, I think. Right, so we go through, we save that. Oh, we do need to, to set the response format. So how do we want students to respond? We can choose MP3 here, or audio via Red 5, or video response, or picture response. The picture response 
is a whiteboard. So they would uh, choose to uh, draw on a whiteboard. We would, we would ask them to draw on a whiteboard. We'll do that later. Now we're just going to do the audio. Wonderful, save changes. Okay, and here we have a Harry Potter question. And if we preview that question, move my little screen peg again. There we go. So the same deal, allow. Uh, and here we have our audio. Here we can simply record our answer, which is you know, Harmony Granger, Harry Potter, Ron Watson, Ron, Ron Watson, um, Snipe, Snape, Snape, okay. Not as good on Harry Potter as they on burgers. And we're done. Okay, it's the middle one finish. Let me just pop back down now and see if there's any questions. Oh, absolutely, Megan. You can have text on the screen just in that in that in that text area that we just saw. Uh, let's move, move back there. Close this down. Let's edit this question. You would just uh, sometimes actually the very beginning here, it's a little bit hard to add text. Let's hope, hopefully we can. We can. We could say you know please name all the Harry Potter characters. You could do you could do something like that, and when you save it, and uh, preview it, it's going to look like this. Okay. Now I just got a little notification that my mouse is running out of battery, which is really a disaster. We want now. Um, okay, should that come to pass? Should I suddenly run out of uh, mouse ability? I'll I'll do something. Okay, let's come back then to uh, see how you guys are going over here. Great. Okay, um, and now I'll show you the the database activity field, which is really useful. But it'll, in this in this case, I'm going to show you how to do it with a. Um, with the whiteboard. Let me prepare some batteries here because my mouse is uh, giving me a hard time. It comes to pass, I'll disappear. Okay. Now, let's here we have draw the picture. So in this activity, uh, the student hears. Uh, oh, help! Didn't see that. Oh dear. Um, didn't see that. No, 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 no. Um, let's go over here, shall we? Okay. You're not supposed to see that picture. Okay, the students can't see that picture. It's only because I'm logged in as an admin. But here uh, they are asked to draw the picture, and they have to first listen to the audio, and then after they've listened to the audio. Uh, draw the picture of what they've just heard, and then they have to submit their picture. And after they've submitted the picture, they are able to see the actual picture and also the pictures that their friends have drawn. So let's try that now. Quickly use them to play. So I said, there's a man, he's wearing a suit, he's running away from an aeroplane, and he's running very quickly. Indeed. So uh, the students won't see all these editing fields, of course. They'll just see the add entry, the search, the view single, and the view list. This is all uh, Moodle. Okay? The, only, the, the Poodle part is this audio recorder, and now this, uh, this whiteboard that we have here. So we're drawing a picture of a, of a man running away from an aeroplane. So let's, let's do that. Let's draw a little picture here. Let's bring them in. And he's, uh, he's running away like this from the aeroplane, and he's running towards the camera, so coming this way. And then we have an aeroplane in the background. Uh, again, I perhaps better at writing software than I am at drawing aeroplanes, but uh, this is my aeroplane. Okay. I actually do pretty well with this. Okay, and I save. 
have to save using this uh, the big button here, otherwise it doesn't uh, get there. So just to reinforce the fact that the students need to save or that they have saved, I'll put a little checkbox here saying, did you press save? And that should help them to notice that they need to press save. Then we choose save and view. And the picture that we've just drawn should then be added to the database. Uh, and we can see here. Now we've actually had a few submissions. There we go, that's great. So uh, let's have a look at the list. This is the actual picture. It's from the movie North by Northwest, an Alfred Hitchcock movie. It's a classic, although I wonder why it's a classic to look at it, really. But uh, let's have a look. Uh, that's the initial picture that I drew. Then we have Russell Crowe's picture. Great, Russell. Um, yeah, that's a good picture. And then we have, okay, that's a good picture by Natalie Portman. That's very nice. David Hasselhoff's drawn this picture, and that's me. Oh, cool. There you go. Oh, because he's running towards me. Good, good. Emma Watson. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's the drawing? <laughs> that was a dot, wasn't it? Okay, and there's and there's me. All right. So you can you know it's fun just for us to look at these pictures, but you know that the students when they look at the other students in the class's pictures, you know it's a real um, it's a real buzz. They laugh and they they have a great time. And then of course the next time you you run through the activity, you know they know what it is and they know what's going to happen. So they you know uh, they're very excited and they you know they they try very hard to uh, perform the activity. Let me pop down and see if there's any, any pictures here, any questions. Uh, yeah, the battery thing. Yeah, actually, I actually have some batteries here just by chance, so should that happen, I'm, I'm good to go. I think that's good. You see that flash pop up every time? The, the flash pop up, uh, you can just set that in the settings to remember, um, it's right, right clicking, and uh, I, should, I don't know why I haven't done that yet, but um, uh, you can do that. So the next time I go back there, I'll, I'll show you that. Um, hyperlink that was embedded. Can you edit the HTML and then link the text yourself? I'm just wondering where that was. Um, hyperlink that was embedded. Which one do you mean there? Uh, Alan, which one did you mean there? Did you mean the, the, the picture of of the uh, the man running? Oh, I see what you're saying. You mean when I, when I embedded the... Um, the audio file, um, yeah, you could, yeah, you could do that. That would, that would work, but it'd be a little bit tricky. But you could do that, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to think why you'd want to do that, because that would, and that would be simpler in in the. It would work actually, yes, yes. So, for example, if you wanted to have an external audio file and use one of those funky players like the Once Player or the um, uh, or the, or the word player, yeah, that would work. You have to be quite crafty about how you made that link, but it would work, yes. yes. Um, uh, the, the only activity in this particular database is just that, that whiteboard, but you could, of course, add more. You could add whiteboard and an audio within the same activity, or, of course, have different activities. Um, yeah, when my daughter comes back, she can draw good pictures. You're quite right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I do have to work on the demo side of, you know, I guess I'm a true programmer, I just I write the code and then I, I go and do something else. But I really need to work on the, the whole documentation and the organizing of the um, uh, the demo site so that other people can, can get in there. But is it, is it, but it is a one question database. Well, this is the, the Moodle database, so you can add all sorts of things there, yeah. Um, I'll just quickly show you that, I guess. Uh, I think that's your question. Um, so the Moodle database is, is, is astonishingly flexible. I think people don't really, it's one of the, the, the um, activities that, that's really li little understood, perhaps because it's uh, a bit low level. But uh, here we set fields, and these are the fields that people will fill in. So in this case, the fields that we have are the, the Poodle field, for the, uh, the picture in this case, and then we've got the save, the checkbox. If I wanted to add an audio field, well, I just you know create a new field, choose Poodle, and uh, there are other fields here. Um, I'll call this uh, you know audio. And the response type is MP3. Yeah. Okay. So now we over here. I get on one page. We have the audio and the picture and uh, the checkbox. But again, we could choose to add. Uh, a date or a file, upload a file, or a picture, or another Poodle, you know, something, a Poodle snapshot perhaps. We add all of those there, and you could have, you know, any number of um, fields in, the, in that one particular 
database activity. So when a student when the student added an entry, they'd have to add you know one two three four five perhaps fields. I think I answered your question. I hope I answered your question. Um, yes, that's true. Actually, I did at one point have one of my school courses uh, there ready for people to use. It's something I'd like to do more this year. I've got I, I, I reserved a few domain names that I'd like to use for teaching language online, so that I could do you know um, something a little bit more um, focused on students and not on teachers, and that other people could see to use you know how I use Poodle. So hopefully I can get that up you know in the summertime. I was going to do Rocket Japanese, not Rocket Japanese, Zero Japanese was the, uh, the site I was going to do, a site for teaching Japanese. Um, but yeah, you're, you're definitely right. I definitely need to get a demo course going, a decent one. Okay. Um, now how are we going for time? Am I out of time, uh, Shane? Shane here. All good. Okay. Well, listen, I don't know who, how many people are logged into the. Um, I've got another 15 minutes. Okay. Great. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, that countdown timer. You know, where's, where's that going when you need it? Um, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I wanted to show you now the 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 pair with. I'd like to actually try it. I'd like to see if you guys can actually do it. That'd be interesting to me too, because uh, most of the time I do the pair work, I do it within my own my own uh, classroom, and it works great. It's really fun. It requires a little bit of driving from a teacher's perspective, but. Um, uh, it's pretty good. So I've got we've got Emma and David and Russell and Saguni all logged in. That, that's good. So if you guys could actually click on this here, this Poodle Pairwork icon, just go into the Pairwork activity there, and just wait, just wait there for a moment. I'll arrive shortly. Um, and anybody else who wants to log in, please choose another login and just just try logging in there. Um, because the Poodle Pairwork this will actually connect you in pairs or or groups even, uh, and you'll be able to listen to each other. And see each other. You can use the, the, the web camera if you have a web camera. So, if you haven't got a T-shirt on, now would be a good time to put a T-shirt on if you're going to do the poodle pair with activity. Um, and I drive this using the admin console, which uh, I hopefully I'm the only one that has open because things will get weird if we don't. I don't see. I can see here the number of users that are logged to the pair work, and I don't see too many there. Um, in fact, I see zero. Here we go. I can see zero users. So perhaps no one's in pair work. We'll go and have a look. Well, actually, I've got three there. Here we go. We've got, I've got David and Emma and Natalie. So I should be able to put you guys into a, a group of three. Uh, this is the uh, the admin console, and I can manipulate things. But let me do, let me do it with the group of two first and show you that. So that should randomly assign two. So you get David and Emma, and they're in, a, they're in a pair session now. But because the border is green, I haven't actually applied the pair session. I still have time to drag users around like this. I can add Sigourney in there, or I can remove Emma and bring her over here. Um, now that we have, let's make another set of pairs. We've got two pairs. I click Apply, and they should be able to see each other uh, in uh, their video pairs. Okay, and uh, hear each other. Uh, a bit hard for me to check from here. Usually we do this in the one room. We move Meryl over, put Meryl into David and Saguni's group, and I'll apply that too. Okay, so now we have video pairs, or video groups, and hopefully David and Saguni and Meryl and Natalie and Emma can all see each other. I'll quickly back off and see if that's actually happening. The link in the chat that's. Uh, demo.poodle.com. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me just come back then to here, and the password is password for you. If I click here, the settings here, I should be able to uh, show part for video. So maybe I can see the videos too. So we've got okay, so we can see Natalie's video there. I can't see Emma. Perhaps Emma doesn't have a camera. If we click over here, we can see. Uh, okay, so we can see David Hasselhoff and uh, Sigourney. 
Yeah, and a little bit of me. I've oh, got Russell. Russell's here. Just clear that off. I'll make I'll make pairs of two and apply that. Okay. So now we should have three. We should have now three pairs. Yeah. I think you guys can probably hear each other too. So actually, I'll just. Uh, Not that sound that was getting a bit uh, wild. And now I'll just clear that pair session, and you guys should be all out of it. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, that's the poodle. That's the poodle period. I'm getting feedback here, uh, but uh, I hope that's not going too 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 bad. Uh, okay. okay, so yeah, that, that's okay. Oh, I'm going to ignore my own feedback. Hopefully, somebody can deal with that. That's gone. That's great. So yeah, that's that's the uh, the poodle pair work. It's it's the the thing that I like the most, and the thing that my students really appreciate. We can even do uh, a whiteboard there, so we can actually you know, bump students in and out, and they can draw on the same whiteboard, and they can do chat within that. So yeah, actually, Fred, it's it's a leaf out of your book. It's a bit like Big Blue Button, not quite a, not quite as polished by any means, um, but it works pretty well, and it's a great replacement for the you know the really expensive language labs which have their you know their their, their headset pair work, which is just a disaster when you compare it because uh, as soon as you use the headset pairs, the students go nuts trying to find each other in the same room, looking at each other and waving and wondering who they're talking to. But when you can see their video, the whole pair work session goes much more smoothly. So um, yeah, um, but yeah, I should say it, you know it's a little bit rough and it needs a little bit of driving, and I just need you know a bit of you know just need a, just need a even a week to work on it to to iron out some of the, the little idiosyncrasies and the idiosyncrasies that are in there. Um, yes, Serge, you can hear what the students are saying. Uh, I have turned off the ability for the students to hear what you're saying because it was making things unstable. But uh, I, you know, just just give me a week, you know, to work on this thing full time, and we'll, you know, uh, a lot of that, a lot of those little chinks will get ironed out. Um, surely there's a little bit of documentation. There's a um, there's a, a YouTube video I've made. Um, I think the best thing is just just to contact me directly, and I'll I'll send you what I have. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'd like. Well, yeah, I guess I, you know, uh, it's something I really want to do. I just I just need a little bit of time on it. Uh, the teacher Megan, at this stage, they used to be able to interrupt, but it was making the uh, uh, making the system unstable for some reason. But I think the later Flash players, it may not be an issue anymore. Um, so uh, at this stage, you can't. But with just a little bit of work, I think that that we can get that function back for the teacher to interrupt. Um, okay, I'm going to close my screen sharing now. Back to the presentation. Take them off instead. I think so. Yes, you can have a text chat. There's a text chat in there as well. So it's text and whiteboard, audio or video. Um, uh, yeah, perhaps I should do a whole presentation on the uh, on the pair work at some point. Um, yeah, I think there's very few people using pair work just because uh, it's not documented very well and it is a little bit a little bit clunky in some areas. Um, and now I think I've just about cleared my plate. I just I want to start working on the speed reading module and the pair work soon. Um, so hopefully even by summer we might have you know something that's uh, a little bit easier for people to use. Okay, uh, we're we're pushing close to 10 o'clock, so now would be a good time if people have any general questions or any specific questions. Um, I'm here to help. I'll show you my picture too. I'm back. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm glad you like the tools. They've been coming a long way. The documentation is a little bit sparse, quite sparse. Um, oh, Moodle Rooms, Cheryl, don't talk to me about Moodle Rooms. <laughs> um, yeah, the partners, you know, they, they, um, yeah, you know, they make, they, they make it a bit tricky to get to get things in there. So Moodle Rooms have never contacted me directly. They've never said, hey, Justin, could you answer this question about Poodle, or could you, uh, could you do this to make Poodle? Uh, work for us, you know. They've never done that, so you know, if they have a problem with Poodle or if they don't, you know, I, I just don't know. But um, 
uh, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of an issue because I, I had one plugin that I made. I just I shouldn't probably say this, but I had one plugin that I made for somebody, which they you know they paid not very much money. It was about you know about a thousand dollars. Took a long time to write, but it was it was a good plugin. And Moodle Rooms wanted you know far in excess of that just for the um, the code review. So you know um, I don't know, and, and uh, I, I could never I, I didn't get a clear answer as to why. But um, so some of the partners are a bit tricky, but I know they're using it at Remote Learner and um, some other places. So not all the partners, but if you want them, if you want Moodle Rooms to use it, just say you want to use, to use Poodle and to get in touch with me, and I'm happy to do whatever it is that they need. To whatever hoops they need me to jump through, or whatever needs to be changed for me to get it into Moodle Rooms. Yeah, sleep's an issue, Megan. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. No, we, no, we're keen to. I'm keen to maintain it. You know, I'm still working on it. Lots of things I want to do on it. It's fairly stable now. Um, you know, there's been a bit of back and forth over the over the years, but uh, yeah, it's pretty good now. All right. Well, um, thanks very much for coming along. Um, it's great that you came along. You just just feel free to come at, to to come along to poodle.com and leave me a message. Um, you can contact me on uh, Twitter. Here's my here's my little Twitter handle. I changed it to be more uh, user friendly. Uh, or you can just just come just uh, send me an, a uh, an email to. So there, there you go. All right. Thanks very much, everybody, and I'll uh, see you soon. Paul and Shane here. Just wanted to say on behalf of the IMIT team, thank you, Justin, for doing that, that presentation. Uh, very much appreciated. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everybody.